The Alpha YZ20 is Gearbest's in-house brand and well, it exists to compete with the CR10 in that section of the market. And with a price tag of $299, it can definitely grab your attention. Question is, is it any good? Stick around and you'll find out. The Alpha YZ20 is the uh, second 3D printer to come out of Gearbest's in-house developers. The first one being the Alpha YZ10, which was a very large format 3D printer, which I still have yet to review, um, but lacks quite a bit in delivering on its promise. The Alpha YZ20, on the other hand, is a much smaller version comparable to the CR10S uh, with a build volume of 300 by 300 on the X and Y and 400 on the Z. It runs on a 24 volt power supply, which means that heating up the build plate to temperatures such as 70, 80 or even 90 degrees takes only a few minutes. It prints through a Bowden setup with a uh, hot end that looks almost identical to that of the CR10, which means the threads make it easy for you to change nozzles so you can use E3D style. The frame is mainly composed of 2040 and 2020 aluminum extrusion, making it extremely solid. It also has a removable gloss build plate covered in a Biltec type surface, um, which is branded for Alpha One. It also comes with a full color touchscreen LCD along with the power of resume function and a run out filament sensor. Now my experience with the Alpha YZ20 has it's been a bit mixed and reason is that I threw quite a lot at this printer and quality of each print is impeccable and even when it comes to extended prints like the hand that I printed from Devin Montes it's called Reach you can find it on my mini factory this was a 46 hour print. It was done in uh, 3D Prima Rainbow PLA and it looks absolutely stunning. It was scaled I think to about 450% from its original size and it printed beautifully. The color transition is great, the filament looks great and the print quality is actually quite good. A, the printer could do with a couple of TL smoothers. Unfortunately, you cannot change the stepper drivers because uh, they are integrated and something else I need to point out is that the firmware of the printer is not open source it's proprietary to AlphaWise. 100 micron prints also look absolutely impeccable um, this print is also done with 3D Prima Easy Print PLA it's a bust of a White Walker from Gear of Thrones I will leave links to all these files in the video description at 100 microns it looks impeccable it printed flawlessly once again this is another 42 Two hour print so this printer has no problem whatsoever handling extended times of printing when it comes to certain materials now I say when it comes to certain materials because I have had a few issues along the way with some higher temperature materials which I will get into very shortly printing in TPU was relatively easy uh, I printed this vase in bioflex this is the Tondonosek pill vase Unfortunately, I did a mistake uh, where I didn't do enough bottom layer. So as soon as I took it off the build plate, the base stuck to the build plate and it now looks like basically a, a looking glass. But I also did manage to print a Bioflex wallet. Fortunately, I was still playing around with the settings of the material because it was the first time I ever printed it. Um, it looks okay, but it could be much better. But it does print flexibles. In fact, I also printed with some spanner hands, TPU. Um, I printed all these latches for the spool holders and also the seals inside. So flexible is definitely not an issue if you print slow enough. Next was PETG. And initially when I started PETG, I was having some issues. And what was happening is that the printer was kind of printing sideways it was printing at an angle so it wouldn't do 90 degrees whenever you print something it kind of starts well it kind of starts shifting up along the z-axis onto the x and y axis so it starts tilting the print on its own and i couldn't figure out what was happening until i had a bit of a look at the printer and i noticed that one of the idlers for the uh for the x-axis was actually a bit bent and the belt was actually riding on the uh, pulley so what was happening is that it was kind of losing alignment and that was causing the print to actually start 
well, being printed slanted. So what I did was I took it apart and I could see that the, uh, the idler bracket, which is in metal, was slightly bent and therefore I just had to bend it back into place. And once I did that, it was printing fine again. So then I threw in some Hertz Peggy and started printing one of uh, Fernando Yuris's Conway's um, towers, which actually turned out really good considering there's this is Peggy, it comes with a lot of retractions. Stringing was almost a minimum. Uh, still can see a few wisps, which is absolutely fine. These can be easily removed with a bit of heat, but I decided I want to leave them them so I can show you guys exactly how it handles it. Following that, I threw in some spanner hands, red Peggy and black Peggy, and I printed this awesome vise. It works beautifully. Tolerances were perfectly fine. I did have to print the, uh, the screws for the vise at 150 microns because whenever I printed at 200 microns I was getting quite a bit of sagging on the sides of the screws but printing them at 150 microns proved to be uh, perfect so it assembled perfectly fine all together works great and now I got myself an epic vise then I went on to printing vases so I wanted to do something special so what I did was I changed the nozzle and I used E3D 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Um, the AlphaWise uses the same threads on the heat block as E3D does, so you can easily swap out the nozzle. And I wanted to print some spaghetti printing, so I threw in some protopasta and started printing these bases. For the first couple of layers, everything was printing fine, but then what was happening was that it started jittering while printing so i was getting lots of blobs lots of stringing filament was being overcooked i tried to change the settings for the print but i realized that the screen had actually frozen completely and i couldn't do any settings changes i switched it off i switched it back on and i noticed also that the uh, power of zoom shot function wasn't working as it should be so rather than homing x and y it was also homing x y and z so it couldn't resume the print i tried reprinting the vase quite a few times at the uh, 200 microns at 400 microns 600 microns and constantly having the same issue so what i did is i reached out to gearbest and i told them what the problem is and they got back to me telling me that they have updated the firmware now that i should update the printer uh, and see how that goes. So that's what I did. I downloaded the firmware, which can be found on the Facebook group for Alpha YZ20. I updated the printer and tried another vase. And this time it was a complete success. And not only was this beautifully printed, the power of resume function was working again and the print just completely just fine the screen didn't freeze whatsoever so yeah it definitely just needed a firmware upgrade however the printer freezing was not only limited to vase mode now the vase mode after doing a bit of research it turns out that it was happening to quite a lot of people but what I've noticed is that when you have extended prints with higher temperatures, at least on, uh, on my machine, the printer was freezing whenever I do extended prints on PEG, for example. So anything over six hours or eight hours, the printer would just freeze completely. It would finish the print fine, flawlessly, beautifully. It would then, once it's done, it would just simply home the X and Y and move the build plate out of the way but seeing as it was frozen, it would not cool down. So even if the print is finished, the hot end still remained at 245 degrees, the bed still remained at 70 degrees, and it just sat there. And that is definitely one of the biggest issues that this printer has. The fact that it is closed source means that no one can actually check in to see what is wrong with the printer. It is left up to Gearbest, unfortunately, to be able to figure these things out. Now, personally, I, I commend Gearbest for constantly being in touch with me and asking me if I have any issues, what they should fix, what they should work on. And I really like that, that they're taking on feedback and actually working with it. However, I feel that something like this should have been picked up before the release, because this could be a potential hazard. Having 
temperatures sitting there that high could it just spells disaster now unfortunately that is not the only issue i've had with this printer granted that all the rest of the issues aren't that big but there are issues. Uh, one of them is the uh, filament runout sensor. Now, while the sensor works and it works very well, unfortunately, that's all it can do. It can detect a uh, filament runout. So once the filament stops, the print just pauses. Your nozzle is left on the part. It starts cooking the part and you have no options on the uh, on the touch screen in order to retrieve or retract all that filament and the problem is that the uh, switch that detects the filament runout is so close to the extruder that you can't actually pick up the filament in order to pull it out and replace it so you'd have to literally disassemble the uh, the pneumatic connector for the ptfe tube and actually remove the filament manually and then reattach it. Granted that a simple fix for that would be to literally reprint the uh, enclosure for the filament runout sensor and just extend it outwards by maybe an inch. More easily than that is have a feature on the firmware where when there's a runout of filament, the printer would simply home on the X and Y, let you know, you press a button and it just retracts the whole. Um, strand of filament that's sitting on the bottom tube. Another issue I've had with the runout filament sensor is the fact that the hole where the filament goes through and um, basically triggers the switch that detects the runout of filament is actually quite large. So the filament actually moves freely quite a bit inside. So the trigger, it keeps on triggering the runout of filament and therefore it keeps on ruining the print. In fact, so much so that for most of the time, I ended up disconnecting while well, taking apart the, uh, the switch for the filament sensor. I would take it out and just tape it off completely in order for it to constantly be triggered and not have to worry about that issue. Power of resume function works beautifully after the update that I did. But once again, if the power goes off, what will happen is the nozzle will sit on the model. It just doesn't lift anything whatsoever. Um, so until it cools down, it's going to be cooking your print. So there might be a few flaws in it. However, at least the feature is there and it works. The good thing about the way it works is that it waits until the hot end has heated up completely before it actually moves and homes on the X and Y and resumes the print, um, making sure that well, your print is not ruined more than necessary. So now all this translates into well, basically a bit of a shame because the print quality on this printer is incredibly good. I actually have to say that I am very happy with the print quality of this printer. The problem is that at what price? Um, it's not just that it's 299, which is a very good price. The, the idea is great. Execution could have been much better. The fact that there is that possible fire hazard um, for the print, uh, for the printer remaining at heated levels like 70 degrees on the bed or possibly 90, depending on what you're printing, and the hot end, that is just a fire hazard. And that's a big, big no-no in my books. Now, while I know that Gearbest are working on this firmware, um, they're constantly updating, I think that should take priority. I don't think it should take them long to fix it. Um, and until they do, I, unfortunately, I cannot possibly recommend this printer. As much as I love the print quality, that's just too much of a fire hazard. And that is all I have to say about this printer for now. If you do have one, or you still intend to buy one, because ultimately the price is really good, so many of you would want to get one and tinker with it, join the Facebook page for the U10 and U20. Gearbust are very active on that, and they're constantly releasing updates for the firmware. So if you do have one, or you do intend to get one, please make sure that, first of all, you take good care of yourself, make sure you have all the safety precautions um, and you're constantly next to your printer when printing. And secondly, make sure you constantly update the firmware um, in order to have the latest one and hopefully Gearbest will very quickly fix this issue because I know that there are quite a lot of these already out in the wild. As for me, that is it. Thank you guys for watching. I want to thank my patrons for their awesome support. I want to thank Magigu and Spanner Hands for being these cha this channel's sponsors. You guys absolutely rock. Please make sure you check them out in the video description. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.